We <laughs> begin with Carlton. Make sense of this what you can. No outcome today and none likely any time soon. It's extraordinary, isn't it? Um, everybody felt that David Teague, I hate to put it in this way, but would be put out of his misery in the early days that followed Carlton's last game. But this came out from the club this morning. The club will take the necessary time required to absorb this review and any outcomes or decisions will be made on the time frame that is in, that is in the best interest of the club. Now, they might have a crack at external pressure there, and that obviously is media, members other supporters of the club, etc. But what about David Teague? My understanding is that David Teague, Matthew, was told today, he might not know until the end of the week. It might take a, a week for him to know his future at Carlton. After that press conference at, that, where he took a few shots at people on the way out, we'll play that in a moment, but I just can't believe... Why would that be if that's the case? They're waiting for Alistair Clarkson which I believe they've been, you know, as I've been saying since round one this year, they've been interested in Alistair. I don't think Ross Lyon is out of the running either, but as Ross himself said last week on the show, he believes Alistair is their first choice. And I think that, you know, what happens now is just extraordinary for David Teague. Are they, do they think that they would keep David Teague if Alistair said no? I don't believe so. So why not just give him the news and give it to him today? I just wonder whether, you know, the unlikely could happen, Cara, that if David, uh, Alistair Clarkson decides not to coach Carlton or coach anywhere next year, that David could keep his job. It was unfathomable to think of that only 24 hours ago, but with this extending out the news that it could be another week, there could be life there for David it, Teague to continue on at Carlton. I, I find that really hard to believe. So I can't, can't see it happening. If it's not Ross Lyon, it's not Alistair Clarkson, you think they'd then go out to... Would you appoint someone for a year? Could you, could you just say Alistair did say, I'm your guy, but not for a year? Well, then you're better off keeping David Teague, aren't you, Hutchie? You wouldn't go with a new coach for another year. You'd just let David Teague see out his contract, wouldn't you? There's another, and we'll listen to David Teague in a moment, but there's another element in all of this, Kane, and that's Alistair's, you know, very gracious exfit, which I'll talk about later in the show, from the Hawthorne Football Club. But I'm not sure Hawthorne are making it all that easy for Alistair either. I was of the impression that that deal, that exit deal, had completely been done with Alistair. Could Hawthorne, now I don't know what's going on there and I can't get an answer out of anyone, but could Hawthorne be hedging their bets and waiting to see what Alistair does before they finally settle financially uh, with so Alistair are you, Clarkson? Are you alluding to a dispute um, between the, the payout or what, 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 do you, what are you saying? Because yeah, publicly that's exactly it's what I'm been... alluding to. OK. You think um, there, have, there hasn't been smooth sailing on the... On the commercial side, I'm not sure. Not, that's not what I'm hearing, and and I just wonder whether. Um, look, that would be galling for all concerned, and you would hope that Hawthorne are going to do the right thing. I mean, they're obvi maybe they're just waiting to see if he coaches, and they're not going to hand over the fullness of the money until they know whether it's being mitigated or not. Well, it, it, today's outcome can only be on the back of Clarkson because they've had 11, a review going for eleven weeks. The only thing that hasn't been done in the review is to talk and sit down with Alistair and understand whether he'd accept the, what surely will be the biggest offer ever put to a coach in the history of the game, Caroline, in terms of 10. It'll be a Buddy Franklin-like offer, won't it? Yep, of, uh, that's what yeah. I'm told. Yeah. And, and, uh, and uh, look, I think it, Al Alistair is genuinely weighing up his options. I think his number one plan and, you know, people close to him, we know he said that his wife Karen would like him to take a year off and that may be what he's going to do. But he's a competitive beast and this is a very and tempting offer. And there's two things in the frame for Clarkson. One is you may not get a team as suited to him to coach like this in the next few years because there's a lot of rebuilds you get jobs to do. And the second is he's, oh, I suspect he's angry still behind the scenes and wants to prove Hawthorne wrong. And that, that would be a driving mm. yep. factor for him. Angrier about that he got moved on or yeah. angry about this potential? Uh, you know. I think both, yeah. I, I th but we know that didn't it's, work. That's for, no way to start a new coaching career. Didn't work for career. Mick at Carlton, did it? No. <laughs> no. History says it hasn't. Well, Ross no. Lyon's interesting. This. We're going to come to him in a second. First of all, on David Teague, uh, we'll set this up. This is his discussion on the weekend about his player relationships. He goes on to speak about the young players, and then he finishes with an observation about Patrick Cripps's game. I, it hurt when people said that I didn't have relationships with the players. It's not true. Yeah, there's certain players that don't love what I say all the time, but that's what a, a high performance environment is. Weedering, Walsh, Mackay, these guys that are going to be this football club, they own this footy club. It's their footy club for the next 10 years. I'm really confident that they understand what high performance is. They understand what playing a, a, a team brand of football is. He chose to handle um, 
So I'm guessing there may have been something, Henry, but it wasn't something that I was aware of going into the game. He kicked the ball at training this week. Um, so I, I don't know if you heard it early or he was just choosing not to handball, but a little bit of that hurt us around the contest. It's been fascinating watching the shift in his language in the last three weeks. Now, that's probably what John Worsfold should have been advising him some months ago. So I'm assuming it's his management or someone has told him to dig in. I've loved the messaging. That's been the biggest flaw in his coaching this year is those repetitive messages post-game that haven't cut through. He's cutting through now, and that pointed grab at the captain, Patrick Cripps, is spot on. He's been down on form for two years now. As the captain of the club, you've just signed for six years. You're highly paid. You put your hand up to play, regardless if it's a dead rubber in round 23. You've got to be willing to kick the footy. So I did like him standing up for himself and also having a crack at the players that have continually let him down over a two-season period. It was pretty galling, wasn't it, to say that these guys own the club, they're the future of the club. No mention of Cripps or Doherty. I mean, again, I can't see him coming back from that, Matthew. Mm. Can you? I, I, I didn't expect him to be coached, but this, this waiting another week, that, what are they waiting for? And, and it's, it's, surely you can't just make him a pawn in that. Uh, it potentially, the well, other that thing that I, speaks to insurance policy. Yeah, mm-hmm. insurance policy, that's for me. That yeah. So, so today up, yeah. we know, today we know, and I'm, you can't talk about your own brother Brad, but we know that Brad, Kane Liddell, we know all the assistant coaches all received a lot of open and honest feedback today, individually on their own, with no one else around them on their section of the review. Now, if most of these people, or some of these people do survive, it's going to be very tough to come back from 11 weeks of what has been pretty torturous for the footy club. Yeah, that's spot on, Cara. I think some will leave, obviously. Some will stay. And then you've got to try and bring people within your football club. You know, you've got to build those up back up. Build those still back there. up again. So I think that's what Luke, Luke from a non-football background, hasn't, in my opinion, understood a football club compared to the business world. That uh, I think everything that the footy department has tried to build... Um, whether he feels, OK, I'll just decide where they stay or they go, even if you keep your job, you still have been on the plank for the last 12, 13 weeks. So there's a lot of rebuilding in that footy club, whether you keep your job or not. a psychologically wanna, safe yeah, environment. Yeah, right. I want to ask you about Ross Lyon. There's a lot to talk about there. But first, let's recap what Ross said right here last Wednesday night, the reaction from Liam Pickering, David Teague's manager, and then Ross again yesterday. If, if an opportunity arose, and I say that with the greatest respect that the come and they rang me, I... I would entertain it. We got blokes going on television jockeying for his job on, on Wednesday night. That's what happened. We said Ross Lyon. I don't even know what that was. It was like a job interview to me. Pretty grubby. Do you think that he's had dialogue with the Blues already? Oh, I'm 100% certain he has. He was talking very smugly the other night. You can say it's unpalatable. You can say it's grubby. You can use all those. But I, I don't want to dignify the response because I love irony. And if you scratch below the surface, there's a fair bit of irony there. People in the media, they're, they're player managers, they're media commentators, they're commentating on everything, and they're conflicted. I'm not conflicted. There was a suggestion around town today that Carlton have cooled on Ross Lyon. What can you tell us about that? I'm, I'm not sure about that. I, I believe, as I believed out of Ross's comments last week, and my own information is that Alistair Clarkson is their number one priority and Ross Lyon is still very much in the frame. Um, Clearly, this delay might suggest that maybe they're thinking they do need to go through a process, which they haven't done. Well, they certainly didn't do last time when they appointed David Teague. You didn't ask Ross whether he would go through a process last week. Do you think that he would? I I don't think there was any plan that he would go... No, well, he, he... That's not right. Ross actually said, I would go through the process. Did he? That's what he said at the start of the interview, yep. How did you think, you know, there's a lot of discussion around whether Ross did the right thing on Wednesday night. It's tough for him. He's being asked the questions, yep. actually, and he expressed that he's got an interest in coaching. Did you think it was disrespectful to David Teague? Uh, it, it's really difficult when you're in this spot yeah. because he's yeah. got to ask it 23 weeks. He's damned if he does and damned if he doesn't. And I think he's brilliant as a media performer. But, yeah, I think he overplayed his hand a little Ka- bit. Oh, Kane had a crack at Alistair Clarkson a few weeks ago for not saying the truth. And now Ross Lyon has done the wrong yeah, thing by saying the truth. It was it's a wish to go. It was almost there. I, it's I don't interesting, Caro, it that he's batted it away all year. And now it's turned away. So would it have been wise? It was brilliant TV, and I understand you're paid to be in the media. You've got to say something. Would it have been wise just for a couple of Look, more I weeks think, to keep batting that question away? I think Liam probably feels a bit guilty because he probably feels he hasn't done maybe enough for his client as he could have done. If I'm hearing in January, February that David Teague is under the pump, Liam must have heard it too. Did he advise him as well as he could have in all the performances David's done this year? I think David is shooting the messenger to be brutal. I think David and Liam have been pretty 
pretty strong on their on their view in the last few weeks. Just on that, you didn't last ask, few weeks. You didn't ask Ross about the Gold Coast Suns. You said that Stuart Jew was likely to go. Was there any reason for that? I don't think. I don't think that Ross is... Well, I'm not sure. Did, um, no, I don't, just, I don't link him with that job at all. I think that if there is a change there, I'm, I've been rooting for Brad Scott, and I think that Brad Scott might be a strong contender there. No, but I you, don't you know that Stuart Jew is... five minutes on the Carlton job with Ross and then you spoke Suns are the likely exit. Did you, did you just, just... You said we won't talk to Ross about the Suns because you don't believe you'd be a contender? Or didn't, you even, it didn't even occur to me. Um, don't know that Stuart Jew is going. Think he could be going. And my... As I've been saying for several weeks, I think, Brad, there's some interest there at the club in Brad Scott. I don't think in Ross. I don't even think the two are linked. 